Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel, My Project Ideas. In this video, we'll be discussing a Python-based machine learning model to predict the species of an iris flower. As far as building this model is concerned, we require Python libraries that are needed to build this model, that is NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, sklearn, installed on your system, and a Jupyter Notebook installed on our system, or any other Python ID which is used to build machine learning models. So with that being said, let's get started and let's have a look on the code. So basically, initially we have included all the necessary libraries that are needed to build this model, that is NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, sklearn, and this this particular code output shows that of uh, we will use the plot of type ggplot through matplotlib library next basically we did not uh, there is no need to import uh, there is no need to load the dataset through pandas read csv function because this particular iris dataset is a inbuilt dataset provided by a sklearn module in python so we need to just write uh, from sklearn dot datasets import load iris so from sklearn uh, uh, module of datasets uh, we have imported load iris, so we have imported the dataset and we have loaded our dataset into our Jupyter notebook. This will return the dictionary which contains a bunch of different fields which is sepal length, sepal width, petal length and petal width. So we'll move further and we'll see what are the directories of iris. So here all the data points are contained in data. There are 150 data points, each of which have four feature values. So there are total, uh, the shape of dataset could be 150. There are total 150 attributes and each attribute contains four values, which is, which is mapped to sepal length, sepal width, petal length and petal width. Now, as you can see that we, uh, this particular data, data, uh, uh, data set have a shape of 150 comma four means we have 150 rows and four columns, which is uh, four columns is sepal length, sepal width, petal length and petal width. So as you can see that this particular iris dot feature name consists of these all attributes, as I mentioned earlier too. All our, uh, all these particular values are in centimeters, which will be useful to predict the uh, species of a uh, iris flower dataset on the basis of these particular four given features. That is, sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width. So we have now basically np dot unique dot iris dot target. So we have basically three species. That is, versicolor, uh, virginica, and acetosa. So these are these species are basically the uh, species of iris flower. Uh, so on the basis of our given data, that is the four attributes we have provided up uh, in the in this model. That is these four attributes. On the basis of these four attributes, our uh, model will classify the flower into uh, different species. That 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 is that uh, the flower could be setosa, versicolor, or virginica. So uh, for the sake of simplicity, we want to focus on binary classification problem for now where we only have two classes, the easiest way to do this is to discard all data points belonging to a certain class such as class label 2 by selecting all the rows that do not belong to the class 2. So basically for the sake of simplicity of our calculation, for the sake of simplicity of building this model to, uh, to achieve some more efficient results and to come up and to build the most efficient model, we want to focus on the binary classification. So we'll basically classify the hmm, data set into two. We'll will drop the, all the values of second class label to uh, for optimization of our uh, model to uh, become to, uh, to make our uh, build, our, build our model uh, in a more optimized way so that it can give efficient and max, uh, maximize the error so basically through this code applet we have uh, we'll only consider the uh, data points uh, which could uh, which does not belongs to uh, class label of 2 that is this particular species so uh, using matplotlib, we create a scatter plot where the color of each data point corresponds to the class label. To make plotting easier, we limit ourselves to the first two features, iris dot feature name of zero, uh, being with the sepal length, and iris dot feature name one of one being the sepal width. So for the sake of simplicity, as we have discussed earlier, we'll go for binary cl binary classification. We have to uh, consider only uh, two out uh, two features that is sepal length and sepal width in this particular scatter uh, scatter plot. So we can see the nice separation of the sepal length and the sepal width according to the given data we have provided to this Jupyter notebook. So this is basically a scatter plot. So splitting our data set into training and testing, assigning the test size as 10% for training and rest for testing. So as we have discussed earlier too that uh, uh, this particular code applet uh, is the phase of train test split. 
where the test is equal to 0.1 means we have used 10% of our data for testing our model and remaining data will be used for training. I have added some uh, comments that, that, is, uh, that are understandable and precise enough. Reading these comments can make you uh, feel uh, more connect with the model and can you can easily visualize and understand what's, what uh, the model is saying or what that particular code update is uh, executing. So basically we have, uh, we are on train test split phase in this particular code applet. So by here we want to split data into 90% training data and 10% test data, which is specified the test size as 0.1. By inspecting the return arguments, we know that we ended up with exactly 90 training data points and 10 test data points. So after being trained test split phase, we have uh, told that test size equals to 0.2 means uh, 10% uh, of data will be used for testing and rem uh, remaining 90% will be used for training the data. So as you can see that in training phase, uh, we have uh, built that 90% of data will be used for training training phase and test 10% of data will be used for testing phase. So as you can see that we have printed that particular value too. As we discussed earlier, test size equal to 0.1 means 10% means 100 of, means uh, that is 10% uh, of 100 would be used for training. That is 10% of 100 is, as you can see, it is 90. So this is basically we have used 90% data for training and 10% for testing. Now, this is the most important code update as we have uh, trained our model through logistic regression uh, algorithm. Logistic regression algorithm. Basically, this algorithm is a regression algorithm helps us to solve the classification problems. So we have uh, imported the logistic regression uh, model and we have created this particular uh, model uh, through logistic regression algorithm. We have we then have to specify the desired training method. Here we can choose cv2.ml.logisticregression underscore batch or cv2.mllogisticregression.mini batch. For now, all we need to know is what we uh, want to update the model for after every data point, which we can achieve with the following code. So basically, logistic regression can be, we can use the various features of logistic regression, either it is batch or mini batch. Here, here we are using the mini batch function and we are set, setting the batch size to one. And now it's time for the iterations of, or to set iterations into, uh, into hundred. The next thing we have to uh, take uh, test our classifier. So basically this particular function lr.train, we have trained a classifier into x train cv2 dot ml dot row sample, which we have uh, included in this, which, which, which is included in this particular mini batch module and by train. So this is basically a training phase completed. This is basically a training phase completed. And this is basically the values of thetas in, in, in that particular logistic regression algorithm. So this is basically testing phase completed. Initially we have testing, uh, we have trained a data set. Now we have test a data set. So it is testing completed. So basically now it's time to check them, check our model that uh, whether our model is accurate or not. What is the accuracy of that particular model? So basically return uh, lr.predict x test. So we have uh, called that matrix function and this particular uh, this particular uh, model tells us this uh, species, uh, species that whether it is uh, uh, virginica, setosa or versicolor and the accuracy. So luckily, luckily we got the one. So basically our data, uh, so the data set uh, model predicted that uh, particular flower provides, uh, belongs to species number one. So accord, according with the, uh, with the great accuracy, well, we have got the perfect score. However, this only means that the model was able to perfectly memorize training data set. This does not mean that the model will be able to classify a new unseen data point for this. We need to check the test data set. Data set. So basically this was basically an entire, entire machine learning model to predict the species of an iris flower. So basically iris data set is a inbuilt data set of SQLint module. So we can directly import a data set through this particular code applet. So this was entirely a model through which different flowers of iris can be classified into different uh, species accordingly that is versicolor, setosa and virginica. So I hope the things are uh, clear and precise enough. The code is understandable enough. Thank you so much for thank you so much guys for watching this video. Please do subscribe to our channel My Project Idea 